This movie to me is the perfect Halloween movie because it's dark and it's scary, but it's real. And it's something that could actually happen. And it has a protagonist that is relatable and smart and very vulnerable. But it's also not the kind of movie that leaves you looking behind your door and under your bed for a week after you watch it. You can watch it and then be done. <laughs> Enjoy it and then it's over with, as opposed to having that lingering, kind of gross, scary feeling with you. Wait Until Dark is a totally different kind of Halloween movie. It's not your average monster, scary movie. This is real. This is real life. These are real problems. I really love Wait Until Dark because it's more thrilling than scary. I'm not really one for scary movies. Um, there's also more to it than just trying to scare you or make you feel suspense. Um, it's a movie that despite the terror and the horror and a lot of the, the real kind of crimes and monsters that are out there, um, it also fills you with hope. One of my favorite things about this movie is that it plays on some of our sort of innermost fears. The fear of the dark, fear of blindness uh, and, and being alone. But it does, it does it in this very practical, real world, everyday kind of way that's fabulous. One of my favorite things about Wait Until Dark is the music. The music is done by Henry Mancini, and he's done a, a lot of film scores. Um, one of his most well-known would be the James Bond theme. He also did the Pink Panther theme. Um, but it is haunting and creepy and just makes you feel like something is coming to get you. My favorite character is Mr. Rote. He's very crafty and cunning, and there were just a lot of things coming from him that I just didn't see coming. My favorite character really is Audrey Hepburn's character, Susie. She's so smart and resourceful, and she's still vulnerable. She gets in this almost Home Alone-esque scenario, but instead of being the typical confident, cocky, I'm gonna stick it to the bad guys kind of person, she is terrified, and she has to find a way to survive until her husband gets home. Susie is blind, which makes us fear for her and care about her even more than we would if she was just a normal woman in this terrifying situation. I also like Susie because she is really, really smart and she doesn't let her disability stop her from being able to be in control of any situation, which is I think something that we can all learn from. My favorite scene, there's a scene, the, the ending scene is just amazing but I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to give it away and so uh, I'll talk about there's an earlier scene it's where uh, the character of Rote, Alan Arkin's character, is introduced and Rote is just pure evil and the ways that they show his cunning and his cleverness and his just evil in that first scene is amazing he just is an expert at giving other people enough rope to hang themselves with He's an expert at covering his own tracks. He's an expert at turning people against each other. He's just good at every bad thing. One of my favorite moments in the film is when Susie realizes that she needs to take out all the lights in her house. And I like this scene a lot because as she starts doing this, at first you're like, what is she doing? Why is she doing this? And then you, as the viewer, suddenly realize the brilliance of what she's doing. My favorite scene is when Rote comes in dressed as Rote Sr. and he tries to pull this charade with Susie and he does this big scene and then he exits very loud, very memorable. He exits, changes his costume and comes back in as Rote Jr. Does a whole different tactic with her and it's very intense. The whole scene you're just on the edge of your seat like, oh, how is this going to go? And they just try to trick Audrey Hepburn and you you just can't wait to see what happens from there. One thing that I would criticize about this movie would be Rote's motivation, that's the villain in the film. Um, it all kind of just boils down to drugs. We don't really know what he wants from the drugs, if he's going to sell, if he's going to use them himself or anything like that. And I just feel like for all the extreme measures he's going to, there should be more to it than just drugs. My main criticisms of this film are you're left with a lot of questions that are kind of essential to understanding the plot in some degree. I think I had to watch the movie a second time through to catch more of what was happening, but I still had a few important lingering questions. And also there's a, an utter lack of falling action. No falling action whatsoever. As much as I love this movie, I would only give it three and a half stars. It's great and I watch it every year and I jump every year at the same part, but 
it, it still leaves me with a lot of questions. I've seen this movie more times than I can count, and I still have at least a dozen questions. This film is five-star entertainment, five-star suspense, five-star enjoyment. It's not a five-star film. Really, this director is not somebody whose work I'm familiar with other than this, but the storytelling was confusing in several places, key places even, and there just were certain elements of piecing the story together that didn't quite come together. And so I, I can't give it full five stars. I would give this movie four out of five stars. It's a really well-made film and I enjoy watching it pretty much every Halloween. In case you're thinking this movie couldn't possibly be scary, Stephen King actually says this is the scariest movie of all time. During World War II, Audrey Hepburn volunteered as a nurse. One of the men that she nursed back to health became the director of this film. In order to make the music as haunting and creepy as possible, Henry Mancini had the two pianos tuned a quarter tune off of each other. Years after Wait Until Dark, Alan Arkin was nominated for another role. He was interviewed and asked whether he was sad he did not get nominated for his role in Wait Until Dark. He said, you don't get nominated for being mean to Audrey Hepburn. As a tactic to get people to see this movie, the studio released uh, a print ad as well as a, a trailer that had this whole spiel about during the last few minutes of the film, theaters would be darkened to their legal limits to increase the suspense. I, I mean, I think it was just a tactic, but it was brilliant and, and it worked. And actually, I've never heard of anything else quite like this being done. The actor who played Sam went on to voice Alfred in the 90s cartoon series, Batman the Animated Series. Alan Arkin's character of Rote was actually very hard to cast. The studio had all these candidates in mind and nobody wanted the part because A, they had to be mean to Audrey Hepburn, and B, uh, they were worried it would be a career killer because nobody wanted to be seen as such an evil character. Despite being the top billed performer in the movie, Audrey Hepburn doesn't appear until about 20 minutes into the film. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you liked our review and if you want to see more of these reviews. Also, if there's an old movie you think we should review, be sure to let us know down in the comments.